Hi, Craig Lectures. Welcome back to another video. And in this video, we're going to talk about the Ravel Pindi pitch debacle, which has been on everyone's mind and everyone's been talking about it. So we want to share our thoughts and reaction with you too. So in this video, we're going to talk about the pitch problem and we're also going to share our reaction to Ramiz Raj's statement on what happened in Ravel Pindi. We'll give you a warning. This is a bit of a rant. And if you like that sort of thing, Hope you'll enjoy it. So let's get to it. All right. So let's back up a little bit and talk about this Pakistan versus Australia and how big a series this was, right? This this was being talked about as uh, a big milestone for Pakistan cricket. Australia hasn't visited Pakistan for a long time. They're finally here after 22 something years. And this is a big moment for Pakistan, especially putting Pakistan back on the map of international cricket that we can also host safely and securely international cricket and a world-class team. So all eyes are on Pakistan globally on what's going to happen in this series. Is this going to be successful? There was an unfortunate attack in Peshawar. And on a side note, our condolences to all the families who lost their loved ones. And coming back to cricket, that event could have damaged the work that has been put into making this series happen. But kudos to PCB and kudos to Cricket Australia for showing their resolve and maintaining the series and not letting that at all distract from what's happening on the cricket field. So that is to show that this is a serious series. It is not just about cricket. It's about the future of cricket in Pakistan. So having said that, you would think that the cricket itself when it's played, would be high quality. And the funny thing is that the players did try to provide a high quality competition. We saw players on the field trying to entertain the crowd. We saw players on the field scoring hundreds. We saw players in the 90s. We saw decent fielding, good batting, and very good sportsmanship. But what wasn't good was the bowling, and it wasn't the bowler's fault. They found themselves on a pitch that does nothing for no one. It was a dead track, and no matter what the bowlers threw at it, it just slowed them down. So we didn't even get to see quality fast bowling from the bowlers who are trying to do the best they can, but the pitch won't allow it. And that's unacceptable for such a high stakes series to then put on a competition like that obviously doesn't do anybody any good, especially Pakistan. And in fact, it has hurt Pakistan cricket in very tangible ways, because here's what's happened. We just heard in the news that the Rawalpindi pitch was rated below average by ICC. And what does that mean? Well, the ICC match referee Ranjan Madhugale has rated the pitch for the first Pakistan versus Australia test in Rawalpindi as below average. The venue receives one demerit. A demerit is like a penalty credit. So this venue has received one demerit point. And just so you know, five demerit points in a five-year period would result in a 12-month ban from hosting international cricket at the ground. So who do we say well done to? I mean, this really does set us up to, to achieve the opposite of what it is that we were trying to achieve with the series, which was more cricket in Pakistan. And we have effectively created conditions to reduce cricket in Pakistan. So let's look back at the Ralph Penny cricket ground and try to figure out what happened here. First, you'll notice that there hasn't been a lot of test cricket on this cricket ground, but there have been 11 matches. And out of those, there is a high percentage of the matches resulting in a result. So two wins went to sides batting first, six wins went to sides batting second. That's eight wins out of the 11. Out of the 11 matches played here, eight ended in a result. And frankly, that's the reputation the Rawalpindi Cricket Ground always had. It wasn't an easy pitch, to say the least. It always had something in it for somebody, and it produced results most of the time, as the numbers show. And to reinforce that, I want to share with you the data from the last five matches before this test against Australia was played in Rawalpindi, the five matches that took place before the test series against Australia. Let's see what happened in those series. In 2000, Pakistan played Sri Lanka in Rawalpindi and Sri Lanka won. In 2004, Pakistan played India there and India won. In 2019, Pakistan played Sri Lanka and there was no result. And in 2020, Pakistan played Bangladesh and Pakistan won. And then right before this Australian series, in 2021, Pakistan played South Africa and Pakistan won. Even in the last five matches, four of the five matches, 90% of the last five games played ended in a result. So what the heck did they do to the pitch in the sixth game that ended in a dead rubber? And that's actually the point. They did do something to the pitch. So it tells us that this was intentional. Why do we know this was intentional? Because Ramiz Raja came on screen and defended the whole thing. So one of the things he says is that this pitch was based on Pakistan's strength. We wanted to make a pitch that was based on Pakistan's strength. And our, what's our strength? That's a good question to ask. What's our strength? Bowling? I mean, there was nothing in the bowling. Spinners? 
yes, I mean, spinners did make the breakthroughs in the end with Noman Ali's performance, but even the spinners were struggling. Noman had to find a spot on the pitch where he had to ke- keep bowling on the leg side to finally get the ball to do something. And any spinner that couldn't find that spot or hit that spot would have no success. So our strengths being fast bowling and spinners effectively neutralized. You really had to wait for miracles or you had to wait for batters to do something really stupid to get out. So I'm not sure which strengths were capitalized. So I'm not sure which Pakistani strengths the chairman of the Pakistan Cricket Board is talking about. It would be nice, Ramiz Raja, if you can also explain to us which strengths did this pitch kind of uh, aim at because we can't see it and the results really don't show. And and don't cite Noman Ali's exceptional performance because before this game, he wasn't even being talked about as a lead spinner. So even if you were going for the argument that, oh, we made it for the spinners, our marquee spinner, which in this case was Sajid Khan, didn't really have the success. So this is kind of like a one-off with Naman Ali. And he is very good, so I don't want to take anything away from him, but it's his hard work and the mistakes of the batsman that led to that sort of a performance, not the help from the pitch. So we can't attribute Naman Ali's performance to the pitch and say that, oh, see, that's why we made the pitch like that. It was for the spinners. No, that didn't work because it didn't work for any of the other spinners on both sides. So then Ramiz has also said, oh, we didn't want to do any favors to Australia. We didn't want to make anything that would benefit Australia. Um, well, that kind of shows it raises a lot of questions. First of all, do you make a pitch mostly concerned about the opposition's ability to benefit from it? Or do you make a pitch based on your own strengths and worrying more about what we can do? Yes. Any wicket you make will have something for both sides. So if our strength, let's say, was batting and we made a batting wicket, that batting wicket would also benefit Warner and Smith and Lebuchain. Obviously, they have quality batters too. So this argument falls flat on its face, this whole thing about we don't want to do any favors to Australia, because the point is we just have to have more confidence in our side's ability to utilize that aspect of the pitch and not worry about what the other side is going to do because the other side is obviously going to come to win no matter the pitch. So if you made a good batting track, it would benefit Australia. If you made a good slow track, they also have a couple of spinners. It'll benefit their spinners too. If you make a fast track, it'll also help their pacers too, uh, as well as ours. But you just have to, at the end of the day, be able to say, you know what? We have pacers, they have pacers. We have spinners, they have spinners. But if we make a bowling friendly track, our bowlers are still going to be better than their bowlers. That's the confidence you need to be able to have, which Ramiz didn't show at all when he said, we don't want to do no favors to Australia, which is saying that we want to make a dead track because we don't want them to score too high. We don't want them to have bowling successes. Instead of worrying about, we want to make a track for Shaheen. We want to make a track for Sajid Khan. We want to make a track for Naman Ali. That should be the approach as opposed to, worrying about what Australia is going to end up doing because the other side is always going to come to win. And the next excuse that the chairman gave was that we were missing key players. So he's referring to obviously Hassan Ali. He's referring to Fahim Ashraf. Yeah, we we're missing key players, but you know, that's what we have a bench for. And that's why we have reserves. And that's why we have other players that we could give a chance to. Uh, it's not like we're picking players off the street, play, putting them in the international team. We are assuming that we have international level players sitting, waiting for their turn. So that this doesn't mean that if a couple of players had to leave, that we destroy the pitch and just make sure there's no result <laughs> because we're afraid that two of our lead players are gone. I mean, we should have two lead players waiting to replace the two lead players that are leaving. That's a professional side. But in this case, that's been used as, as an excuse. Missing players, oh my God, we're going to lose. So I think the whole approach, the whole response to the pitches, the uh, debacle has been that uh, we were shorthanded um, and Australia could have won. So it shows fear. And that's not acceptable from a professional side. There shouldn't be fear of losing. There shouldn't be a fear of, there shouldn't be a defensive approach to cricket. And if from the leader, we're getting the message of like, oh, Australia could have won if we made the wicket better. Obviously, that's bad for our players and their confidence. It's unacceptable. All Ramiz Raja had to do was come out and say, yes, that was a bad pitch. I'm sorry that happened. I don't know how that happened. We thought we wanted a pitch like this or that, whatever. You didn't even have to give all those reasons. You just simply had to say, this pitch was bad. We won't repeat this again. Sorry about that. You won't be disappointed again. The end. 
That's all he had to say. But instead, he came out with these this whole spiel about a bunch of excuses. And I like Ramiz Raja. At Crickelectuals, we like Ramiz Raja. Rafan and I both have only said good things about him so far. But I definitely think this is his first mistake. And I'm actually glad he this happened because now we know how Ramiz is going to be when something terrible happens under his watch or when he himself makes a mistake, which this is. This to me sounds exactly like this happened on with Ramiz's approval. And instead of, so I was interested in seeing how he would re- react to that, obviously. And his reaction has been very defensive. So that that is concerning, right? You want, we want a leader who in time of a problem, a conflict, a mistake comes out and takes ownership that it's their fault and apologizes or gives a decent reason and tells us and promises us something different next time. So Ramiz did promise us something different next time because uh, that's the next thing he says. He says, oh, there's much more cricket left. So don't worry. It's just one game. It it was tied. Okay, well, fine. You still didn't take ownership of what you actually did. You gave us a bunch of excuses and tried to rationalize something that the whole world is laughing at. Everyone, you can just go to social media and see what's going on. You can go to news outlets in Pakistan and outside of Pakistan and see what people are saying. Obviously, the ICC has reported because we got demerit points. You are literally punished for this. You got demerit from the ICC. You are punished for doing something. And you're coming back instead of apologizing. You are actually rationalizing and giving us reasons why that was the right choice. That's not acceptable. And that's why um, I think we're in a bit of trouble with Ramiz because this side of him, I'm seeing for the first time, I guess. I always knew he had a bit of an ego, but, you know, leaders do. Leaders kind of have to have that. Ego is kind of very closely related to confidence. It's not the same thing, but, you know, there's a fine line. And um, we thought, I thought that that confidence is good in a leader. Um, In this case, though, it sounds like this leader uh, is not going to take responsibility when something goes wrong, when they make a mistake, because in this situation, that definitely didn't happen. The good things that Ramiz did is that he did come on camera. He faces people. I like that. Um, He shows a lot of courage. He comes and he faces. He takes responsibility in that sense that he faces the people and answers the question. He doesn't dodge. But don't lie to us. Even if this wasn't a blatant outright lie, it's kind of like a politician's approach to answering a concern, right? People are saying the pitch is terrible and you're coming around with four reasons and five reasons why that was okay. No, it wasn't okay. The whole world is saying it wasn't okay, right? So this isn't just casual cricket fans complaining. This is the ICC punishing you with a demerit on a cricket ground and five in, a, in, in five years or whatever will lead to the ban of this ground. You know, you've jeopardized cricket in, in Pakistan and it's happening under your watch. So you should have come back and said to us that this, is, this shouldn't have happened. We're sorry. And we got to get back on the, on the ball with, with, you know, t- keeping track of good pitches and making good pitches. But instead, you know, we got a bunch of excuses. So... That's that's bad. Uh, so Ramiz Raza definitely gets uh, points taken off for that in my book. I did not expect that. I expected him to man up and actually take responsibility, say sorry, and move on. And the other reason why this is so disappointing is because this man has been pitching the pitches to us from day one. From day one, he's been talking to us about pitches, 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 dropping pitches, this pitch, that pitch, pitch being the sharag of the cricket. The jugular vein of cricket is uh, are the pitches. And if there isn't a good pitch, nothing's going to happen. The cricket of uh, Pakistan is going to be destroyed. It has been destroyed because of the pitches. All of these arguments, they're Ramiz Raj's argument. Some people have you know, confronted him on that. You know, Some people have... Uh, disagreed with that and they have been paid no attention to and that's fine um Ramiz had a vision and that's great we still respect that vision but you can't be the pitch person you can't be the pitch chairman and then your first major series has the worst pitch that that cricket ground has ever seen <laughs> and this 
<laughs> you can't make this up. This is crazy because you would think, you know, he's the guy who's going on to the cricket ground while the curators are making the pitch. And he's like looking and, you know, being interviewed, getting on camera saying, oh, I just want to make sure I keep an eye on everything. You know, pitches are important. He's saying all of that. You know, in PSL, we see him on the on the cricket grounds, observing the pitches, analyzing the pitches, you know, at his off hours. And then here we go. We got our first big series. The world is watching bigger than PSL in some sense because it's about international cricket coming to Pakistan. And that pitch you just made excuses about and, you know, ruined the pitch. Unacceptable. You're pitching the pitches. Your whole, you are a one item uh, ticket for a PCB chairman. Your one item has been pitches. Yes, you're working on finances and you're doing a lot of great work, by the way. There's this is nothing about anything else this is simply about this pitch situation and by the way still like Ramiz Raja I think still Ramiz Raja is the best chairman we we've had in like 25 years so at least um so this is not a vote of no confidence at all this is just in this particular situation this was handled poorly and disappointed in Ramiz. That's all. That's all this is in this one situation. You're pitching the pitches to us the whole time. And the one game we have where we were hoping for a good pitch, the first big event, and the pitch sucks. So um, not a good look. And Karachi hopefully produces a result, but the game is gone, going on right now. And uh, Australia is batting first and our team in the on the first day. So far, I think only 70 overs have been bowled, has only been able to get two players out and one of them was a run out. So this is looking like, you know, that doesn't mean there will be no result, but it once again means that we have a pitch that isn't helping. So let's look at Karachi a little bit. Karachi is a ground that's had the most test matches played 43, seven ended in a win for the batting first team, 18 ended in a win for the team batting second. The highest score here is 765 by Pakistan against Sri Lanka. The lowest total here is 80 uh, all out by Australia and bowled out by Pakistan. So that should give Pakistan some uh, confidence. Um, and the last five test matches here are kind of a mixed bag, um, but still leaning toward more result than a no result contest. So in 2007, Pakistan played South Africa and South Africa won. In 2009, Pakistan played Sri Lanka and that was a draw. In 2019, Pakistan played Sri Lanka and Pakistan won. In 2020, Pakistan played Bangladesh, but that match was abandoned or canceled. And finally, we had a match in 2021, right before this one, when Pakistan played South Africa and Pakistan won. So really only four matches played. The fifth one was abandoned. So out of the four matches, three had a result. Once again, a pretty good you know, result to no result ratio. So we should have a result here unless, again, they messed up the pitch somehow. But the good news is we do have Hassan Ali and Fahim Ashraf back. And uh, hopefully that didn't spook, uh, that took out the spookiness of Australia for our leadership. And they feel like they can handle Australia now. And hopefully they didn't ruin the pitch because of that. So that's the end of it. So we hope this game in Karachi produce a result. We're looking forward to it. It should be a good competition. Both teams have been doing pretty well. They seem to be pretty equally balanced. Australia has added a new bowler to their side, a leg spinner, and that should, you know, spice things up a little bit too. We're going to see a lot of, again, spin bowling um, happening. So this is a competition between spinners and the batters once again. Um, so at the end of the day, may the best team win. Until next time, this is your host, Jason. Yeah, peace.